All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Forge Your Life podcast here today with your host, Richard Food from richardfood.com. And I've got a powerhouse on this show here tonight, guys. This is such a great honor to have her on the show. I mean, I've seen her on Facebook. I've been following her posts. I see some of the most amazing things that this lady <laughs> puts out there. It's so cool to have her on the show. She is a psychic. She's a teacher. She is an actress, a model. She's everything. And she, this is exactly why I call this episode the powerhouse because we have her on the show her name is laura powers and she's just so much more than this more, more, more often than not she's actually being her authentic self and this is what we want to bring on the show here today we're going to talk about that so guys please welcome laura to the show laura good to have you on thanks thanks so much it's an honor to be here <laughs> uh, i'm excited to have you on and i seriously i've seen some of the posts that you put out there on facebook like wow this girl whoa i love it i love it on the authenticity and how real it is but you know, Laura, for the people who haven't heard about you or your work, can you share a bit more about what you do and how you've, I guess, been able to do it? Sure. So I'm most known, I think, as a psychic medium, mm -hmm. as a writer and as a host. So I work for people channeling angels, spirit guides. I do clearings for people as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I've been doing professionally for several years. And then I also host several podcasts myself and mm -hmm. I've written several books. I'm actually releasing my sixth book uh, <laughs> this month. Just in time nice. for Halloween. Nice, nice. And so I love it. And there's, there's so many things you do, Laura, right? And for someone, you know, like yourself, it's not possible to do so many things at once unless you've cleared out the space, right? Unless you've cleared out and made room for that. Would you agree? Yeah, no, I agree. You really have to prioritize and not waste time. I think many people um, spend time doing things that are not important to them. And I've been guilty of that. I'm still working on shifting and releasing things, you know, that, that I don't really care about. I actually just made a Facebook post today that whatever you actually do is what's most important to you, not what you say. Like what you do is what you're really putting your energy behind. Mm -hmm. um, so I think a lot of people get caught up in things that they want to do and they just kind of give up, but they don't look at what it is that they're spending their time and their energy on that maybe they don't really care about. Because how many hours do people spend on, you know, just mindless TV or email or, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. whatever it is that isn't really in alignment with what you want and care about. Mm, exactly. And that's why it's best off to outsource all that stuff as you can. Right. But let's right. talk about this. I mean, and this just popped into my head here, Laura, is like you say you do a lot of clearing work for people. And, you know, we know, I, I know we discussed before the show, let's talk about authenticity, but let's talk about clearing, right? Because sure. I think, I think even before you can become authentic, right? There's so much stuff we'd be crammed in with that we yeah. got to be like this. We've got to do that. We can't say that. We can't be, we can't be doing this, right? But we have to clear that space first and then we can actually see pass through all the barriers of what's going on to see who we really are. So talk me through this. Talk me through how you actually like help clear people with, you know, and what do you actually clear them of? Sure. So I clear many different things. First of all, I look and see what's there. So, you know, kind of like the doctor looks at someone on the physical level, I look on the spiritual and energetic level to mm -hmm. see what's going on. Sometimes people will have just stagnation, you know, energy that's just holding on. Sometimes they'll have literally, you know, ghosts or what I call dark entities hanging out. And these are uh, dark entities are, are beings that I describe as supernatural parasites. So they feed on and create certain types of energies uh, and then keep the person in that pattern so that they can continue to get that energy. So energies like fear, stress, you know, anxiety, pain, etc. So mm -hmm. that's part of my specialty is to look and see what's going on there energy wise and then help any uh, unhealthy energies or beings move along so that the person can be more clear and more easily move forward. Okay. Excellent. And can you do this like over, does it have to be in person or do you, can it be over Skype or even zoom like this, for example? Yeah. Yeah. I can do Skype or zoom. Um, actually most of my clients at this point are over the phone or Skype mm -hmm. and I do in person, but I shifted my model, um, to over the phone just simply because I, <clears throat> I was living in LA and it's like, you know, traffic is horrible and people would be late and it was just like, Oh, I'm just, <laughs> so, this is just much better. Now I still do parties and events and, you know, some um, in person, but, um, yeah, it works just as well over the phone. Um, so I, I like to do, that way primarily yeah too much travel time can get lost in, in traffic and nothing yeah, annoys exactly. me more than that 
right? Yes, exactly. And also I love to travel. So switching to being over the phone, it made me very mobile and also opens up me to, you know, clients anywhere because they don't have to be geographically based. Exactly, exactly. And so if you can do it over Skype, let's do this then, right? When you look at me, right, over here, well, like, can you mm -hmm. actually see the energies? Can you actually see there's like, what is it, the dark parasites around me? Or <laughs> what do you see? What do you see? Just out of curiosity, right? Oh, uh, yeah. People ask me that all the time. So when I'm working, you know, I'm really focusing on that stuff. So mm -hmm. uh, just in kind of day to day life, I, I'm, I might not see things unless it's very strong and powerful, in which case it'll pop up if it's important for me to see. So yeah, when I'm just having like a normal conversation, I'm not like looking, yeah. you know, it's, it's like a different. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> people are, it's funny, I meet people and they're like, oh, and they kind of like some people even hide, which I'm like, oh, what are you nervous about me seeing? <laughs> Yeah, okay, well, I see something. Um, right, exactly. But I, you know, have these two different, like my physical eyes and then my clairvoyant senses. And so when I'm having a, just a conversation with a person, I'm, I'm focusing mostly using just my physical eyes. And actually, if I'm doing a reading, I'm spending quite a bit of that time with my eyes physically closed. So if you want to see an example of me doing it, uh, I was featured on BuzzFeed and you can watch me actually giving readings to people if you want to see what that process looks like. Awesome, awesome. Well, we'll definitely have to grab that link from you and so then we can share it in the show notes. Sure. Sure. Sounds awesome. And I want to see it myself, right? <laughs> and so what are some of the techniques then that you walk people through to clear out you know, these energies, these blockages? And you know, even actually what's a good question here that popped into my mind is like, you know, when you see this stagnant energy you're saying, right? Yeah. Like how do, how do you tell if it's a stagnant energy that's been there for like, you know, a long time off it's just you know some people naturally just feel like they're tired all the time or can't get motivated right and how do we know if that's really something that like it's an energy thing or if it's just a mind thing well, it's, I would say if you're feeling that way, then it's probably an energy thing. I mean, the, the mind is very influenced by energy. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're not necessarily just connected. And mm -hmm. If you're tired all the time, then there's something that could you could benefit from shifting or releasing. So I, I look at the body and I, I actually see it clairvoyantly. Like I, when I close my physical eyes, I can see a person see where there's blockages and basically anywhere where there's dark colors or kind of like lack of flow or movement, there's a problem. So I'll give you a story as an example. Mm. Um, I had a client several years ago where she asked me several questions about herself and then she asked me about the health of her mother. And when I looked at her mother, I saw like dark energy around the heart and mm -hmm. you know, it turns out that when this client had asked me about the health of her mother, her mother had just been diagnosed with a um, brain. Um, uh, what's it called? When you have like a, an, a, a tumor brain vessel. No, um. at any rate. And, and it, sometimes they're stable and sometimes they're not. Mm -hmm. And, when I looked at her psychically, I hadn't seen any problems in the head. And so I just was like, well, you know, I saw what I saw. The problems were in the heart and chest area. And so um, several years later, about two years later, she contacted me. She said, Laura, something that you saw took a while to manifest. But then, uh, you know, we just got this diagnostic and her diagnosis and her mother had been diagnosed with advanced metastatic melanoma in the heart, sternum and lungs. So this is something that I, you know, I saw as an energy blockage. And then a couple of years later, she was diagnosed with this, you know, severe form of cancer. Um, so basically wherever there's like gray energy or lack of flow, even if there's not a physical problem, if it's not addressed, a physical problem will manifest in time. Whoa, freaky, yeah. crazy. Yeah. And I love to know, how did you actually find out that you could like tap into this, you know, energy field? Like when it first happened to you, did you like freak out? Like, what the hell is this going? What's going on? Well, uh, to be honest, when I was little, I, I always saw things and uh, I asked my mother if, if she saw things because I could tell that most people weren't responding to what I was seeing. And so I thought maybe it was in my head and sure enough, my mom didn't know what I was talking about. So I really kept it secret, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, crazy, but that's, that's not to point this out. <laughs> so I, I grew up just trying to ignore it and shut it out and, and deny it really. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I was um, an adult in college um, that a family friend described a ghost that I'd seen but never told anyone about that it confirmed for me that like, oh, okay, I'm not crazy. You know, you can't see my hallucination mm -hmm. or whatever. And so it was both at once like comforting and terrifying because uh, on the one hand, I wasn't crazy, but on the other hand, a lot of this stuff that I've seen was real, which was a <laughs> <laughs> its own set of challenges. So uh, it took many years for me actually to get the training and understand what I was seeing and sensing and learning how to manage. 
Mm, mm. And that would have been like such a scary time where I, you have to live like that, not knowing exactly what you have, your gifts, right? and, and how to actually be authentic. So what was the journey that you went through to actually start becoming more authentic and accepting, I guess, what you do have? Yeah, so it, it was definitely a process for me. So uh, several years ago during the recession, um, mm-hmm. I was really in a crisis point in my life. I was really physically sick. I was unemployed. I had had a position with the University of Washington mm-hmm. and, and it ended right when the recession started. So I couldn't find another job because nobody was hiring, which had never happened to me. I was, you know, I was diagnosed as depressed and several other medical diagnoses. I was 50 pounds overweight. I was a mess. Like I was wow. just like in that <laughs> marriage, you know, like every, every part of your life that you want to be good was not good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I went to a psychic because I was really at that point kind of lost and, and didn't know what else to do. Like all the, the traditional things that I'd done hadn't worked. And, um, you know, I'd lived my life very much in the traditional way. I, got my, you know, education, I had my master's degree, I got married, I got the house, I got the like career, I got the, you know, all the stuff that you're supposed to do. And then my life just totally fell apart. So I went to the psychic and she said, well, you know, when you shut out your psychic information, which of course I hadn't told her that I had, you know, sensed things, she's like, well, you shut out what you needed to know, which made sense. Like I didn't, I kind of walked into some really bad situations because I wasn't seeing what I needed to see. So then I set the intention to psychically open back up and I started to take classes and that's when my life really transformed. Mm, wow. And then now you get that chance to actually help other people open themselves back up yeah. to themselves, right? It's wonderful. It's so rewarding. Like that's one of my favorite things with clients is to see the transformations, you know, see the things that have shifted in their lives. And it literally, I mean, sometimes I've, I've gotten clients that started out when they came to me and they were like, you know, suicidal or borderline suicidal, just mm. really in a bad place. And then after making some changes and doing some clearing, you know, they're in a really good place with positive um, things happening in their lives. Mm, amazing. And so the question I have here for you, Laura, is like, you know, if someone who, who feels like they're experiencing these blockages themselves, right, is there a way, like, do they have to go see someone like yourself or is there something they can start doing for themselves if they don't have access to someone like, you know, you? Sure. Well, the first thing I'd say is to um, invite angels into your life. So I work a lot with angels and mm-hmm. angels are divine beings of light that are here to help us. And they're not of a particular religion, religion though they are described in you know major world religions um, all over. So first thing is just to invite them in. And, and the reason that's important is our minds, our lives, and our energy fields are very much like a garden. If you don't invite, you know, the flowers and if you don't plant flowers, then you'll just have a weedy garden. Well, that's what kind of like life is like so if you invite the angels in then it it opens the door and allows them in um and then you can have positive changes most people just don't know to do that so like for, for me when i had my big life change and when i was going through my crisis i invited the angels in and i had an angelic experience and my life started changing right away and very dramatically and quickly so yeah i mean if you could hire me or, or someone right. like me great first thing is just do that and that's free and you know easy all you have to do is mentally invite them in or you can say it out loud or write it down Uh, the most important thing is the intention okay so you're saying when you say invite the angels in it's kind of like put it out there saying that look i'm going to be open to what is it what what would someone actually have to do if they had to put out the intention like how would you advise them and this is why step by step to invite angels into your life yeah so (laughs) First thing is um, you can ask, everyone has a guardian angel, so you can invite your guardian angel to assist you um, and ask for for guidance and assistance. You can also have specific angels. So Archangel Michael is a great first angel to ask. He's a protector and he's good at clearing dark energy specifically. So you can just mentally think or say out loud, 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 Archangel Michael, please help guide and protect me and mm-hmm. see what happens. So the angels send messages to us through the universe, through other people. If you want to learn about, about that specifically, you can read my book, Angels, How to Understand, Recognize, and Receive Their Guidance. It's all about how to communicate with angels, how they communicate with us, how to interpret their signs, mm-hmm. and, and get them into your life to, to make some drastic and big positive changes. Right, right. Wow. So this is like the first time I've ever heard about like, you know, inviting angels into your life. And so I was like, 
Okay, tell me more about that. How do I actually do that? I need to do that, you know? Right, right, yeah. Yeah, I, it's one of these things that's really wild. Once you do that, it's like your whole perception of how things work can change. Like I, I lived my life very analytically and sort of practically before. Mm-hmm. Again, my master's is in poli sci. Mm-hmm. You know, I lived my life very like traditionally in terms of what you're supposed to do. But then when I invited angels in, it's like I realized how easily and differently things could change. Um, And so, for example, you don't necessarily have to go through the gatekeepers. Like if you want to get to, you know, from A to Z, you can just go A to Z sometimes with angels (laughs) instead of like A, B, C, D, you know what I mean? Like you could just skip a lot of things because they help you go the, the simple route. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Interesting, interesting. And so let me let me ask you an example here, right, for the people who are listening. So when you let angels into your life and, and what what were the, some of the things that like examples that you're like, oh my god, this is this is seriously like must have come out of coincidence or because you know you invited them in. Sure. I, I have several examples. Um, one example was when I was first starting out in terms of my business as a psychic. So I've been taking classes and sort of practicing reading for a while, but then I decided to officially do it as a business. And, you know, what's the biggest thing when you're new, like you need customers and clients and people to know what you're doing, right? Because yeah. like, because you haven't done it before. So people don't know about you. So I asked P, the PR and marketing angels help me. So there's what I call specialty angels. So basically whatever it is that you want help with, they're angels in that area mm-hmm. that can help you. So if you want help with parking, ask the parking angels. If you want help with, you know, studying, ask the studying mm-hmm. angels. Like seriously, like whatever you want, just ask the angels in charge of that to help you and they can. So I asked the marketing and PR angels to help me. And uh, shortly thereafter, I got the idea and was given the suggestion by my guides to um, give readings at a a coffee shop that was near where I lived. And uh, to be honest, I really resisted it. I was like, I don't want to give readings at a coffee shop. Like I, (laughs) I I kind of like, was like, I don't get why you guys are telling me to do this. But I, after a couple weeks, I was like, okay, you know, I listened and I just, I literally printed off something on my computer and printer at home and put it up in the window. And so the first, day I was scheduled to be there, I get a call from the managing editor of the local paper Mm -hmm. and asked if he could write a story about me. So Mm -hmm. literally the first day that I was doing this, you know, he comes and he watches me give a reading to someone else. And then I give him a reading and then he takes a photo of me and it was in the paper and the, in the regional paper, even not even just my hometown paper, but like in the county newspaper full photo spread with like a long article about me and what I was doing like that would have been very expensive to pay for and I didn't you know I didn't do any of the things that you're supposed to to like you know get press coverage I didn't write a press release I didn't hire a PR person I didn't spend any money (laughs) you know so it's that's a perfect example like that was great that got me so many clients and also just awareness and legitimacy because people Mm -hmm. you know and you can put that link on your website. And yeah. so that was the beginning. And I've had other examples like that since then. But it's very incredible to me once I ask the angels for help and then I open up to the guidance that they're giving me, how easily things can come about. Mm-hmm. And so talk with me through this, this one step here, because so for me and some other people here I'm listening is like, okay, how did you hear that guidance? Like, did okay, so this, pop is, up? this is where... Yeah. So me as a psychic, you know, I have, I have a lot of training and I do teach psychic development if anyone is, is wanting. And I write about it in my books, like just yeah. um, exercises that you can do to help tap into your own intuition and information. But I am clairvoyant and I'm clairaudient. Um, so I actually see and hear things. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, just to give the idea that, yes, I, for me, it's quite strong and developed because I've, I've spent a lot of time and energy focused on it, but everyone has access to some intuitive or psychic ability. And sometimes when we hear uh, information from our angels and guides, we actually hear it as our own thought. So mm. that might sound strange, but our thoughts are not always just our thoughts. And especially if there's something that's like repetitive, um, it could be a message from our angels and guides. Like if you have an idea that you he's popping up and you like can't like kind of get rid of it. It's very possible it's coming from them. So if you're unsure, ask the angels for a sign. Um, So I do this regularly. Um, So this was a little bit later in my career. I was more established um, at this point. Um, and I was feeling like I was getting the message to raise my prices, but I just wanted to confirm, you know, I was like, mm-hmm. angels, 
make sure that I'm on the right track here. <laughs> so yeah. I asked angels for a sign that I could not misunderstand. Yeah. I was driving home from, from Denver to Lafayette, which is my hometown at the time. And when I got home, I got my mail out of the mailbox and there was a business magazine and uh, the cover headline article was 10 reasons why you should raise your prices. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it was like so clear, right? So this is, you can have like a dialogue with your angels and guides through the impressions that you get as well as through the world around and you can ask for, for clarification and messages from them. Mm. Wow. All right. I did not know there was some parking angels. So every time I'm going to go, oh, yeah. parking, I'm like, all right. Oh, yeah. they're, they're amazing. And I tell you what, I've had incredible times of that where I be going to like a sold out concert or something. And I will literally pull up to like right in front of this year theater. And there's like a parking metered spot, like right there where I, I think everyone just thought it was like a loading zone or something. So no one's parking, People are parking like 10 blocks away. And then yeah. they'll, you know, pull up like right there. It's amazing. <laughs> wow, I got to give this a try. Wow. Laura, this has been an awesome time chatting with you and just learning more about the psychic world. And so as we start wrapping up here, Laura, we're going to head into what we call the quick fire question rounds. Right? Sure. And so th- we're going to start off with the first question, my favorite question, our signature question here. It's called the time travel moment, right? Right. You could go back to any moment in your life and you could talk to little Laura and give her one piece of advice. When would you go back to and what would you tell her? Gosh, I think I'd probably go back to myself there, maybe middle school or high school. Um, you know, I think that's a challenging time for a lot of people uh, and just say like, hey, things are going to be great. They're going to be awesome. Like, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's a time when there's so much stress about who you're going to be and that you do everything right. And, you know, and I, and I will, would tell her like, it's all going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I definitely would go back to my that time in my life as well. Uh, yeah. Next question I have for you, Laura, is if someone wants to learn more about, I guess, opening themselves up to, you know, the psychic world and and being more in tune with it, I mean, is there a book you'd highly recommend that they just must read, must read this book to learn more? Yeah, my book, Diary of a Psychic, actually talks a lot about the different elements of being a psychic. It goes into, you know, the different types of psychic abilities, how Mm -hmm. they manifest. So what does it mean if you're clairvoyant? What does it mean if you're clairaudient? And then there's a section of of different psychic exercises you can practice on your own. So yeah, that would be that topic specifically. Awesome, awesome. We'll add that to the show notes. Uh, The next question I have for you, Laura, is, and we've touched a bit on this, but I want to get your, your view on this here, is, you know, what does it mean if someone is just truly, truly being their authentic self? What's that look like and how would you describe that? I think being your authentic self means you're being true to who you really are, you know, deep in your soul as a person mm-hmm. and what you came here to do. I think it's, it's difficult because society will tell us what is okay or not okay to do or be. And so sometimes we have to go through this process of like peeling back the layers of all that to get to the, the true heart of who we, we really are. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. Love it, <laughs> love it. And so Laura, as we wrap up this show here, I mean, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. And for the people who want to connect more with yourself and you know, seek out some maybe your services and your books, where's the best place they should head on over to? Sure. So the easiest place is my website, which is healingpowers.net. On there, you can um, check, get links to my podcast, free articles, uh, links to my books and you know videos like the BuzzFeed one we were talking about. So yeah, that's probably the best place to find a comprehensive information about me. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> healingpowers.net. <laughs> awesome. We'll put that into the show notes as well. And as we finish up here, Laura, is there anything else you want to mention that we didn't get, did not get a chance to talk about on the show today? Yeah, I think I just want to give the message that, you know, what you dream about is possible and to dream big. One of the challenges with manifesting that I see with people is they dream too small, meaning their their goal or their vision for themselves is so small that their soul doesn't get excited. Mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. they don't really want it. It's kind of like, oh, okay, make 10K more a year or something. That sounds like a good goal, but does it make you excited? Does your heart light up? <laughs> and if it doesn't, then you probably need to think bigger and more heart-based, like, what makes you feel alive and passionate and excited? And, and that's what you should aim for. Even mm. if society tells you that it's not possible. <laughs> ah, beautiful advice. And so 
This is the show. Thank you so much again, Laura, for jumping on and just sharing your story, sharing your wisdom here with the viewers and myself. You're so welcome. It was a pleasure to connect with you, Richard. (laughs) Uh, That's awesome. And so, guys, this wraps up another episode here with the psychic herself, Laura Powers. And I want this. I already know she senses this energy over here, and she wants this. She wants us to spread the word, and I can't keep this a secret. She doesn't want this to be a secret. So let's spread the power. Let's spread that love out there to the world. So please head on over to iTunes to rate the show. If you're feeling powerful, powerful, then give us five stars. If you're feeling powerless, then give us one star. It's all good. Right? Let's spread the word out there. And of course, you can head on over to richardfood.com to get all the show notes and resources that Laura has shared here on the show. And remember, remember guys, to go out there, go live with love and go smash it. And I'll see you again on the next one.